lot of kids ask me, or rather I like to ask them, do fish have tongues? And the first answer I get is like, nah. And I'm like, really? Bleh. They do. We have a lot more oh, in common with wait them. A that is a tongue. It is a tongue. We have a lot more in common with fish than a lot of people might think. And that brings us to our subject matter today. Yep. Fins? Fins. So we're going to do um, feathers and fins. So fins um, will be a dissection with uh, Feaster Elementary's um, fifth graders. Mm -hmm. And they'll get to learn a lot about um, fish anatomy, which oh, in turn, a tongue. That's right? A tongue. Which in turn tells them a lot about our anatomy. Um, but we're also going to go um, talk about feathers and what we've got on the marsh here. With the Fish and Wildlife. Mm -hmm. U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service is going to join us. Excellent. Oh. Just watch it pop back up out of the water. They're diving birds. If you all grab your binoculars, we're going to look at some of the uh, birds and what different activities they're doing. You can see the ones out here are walking around, they're looking for food. So when we think about counting birds, mm -hmm. um, have we seen over time, say just over the last few years, a change in the, in the numbers? It's cyclical a lot of the time, cyclical with the environment based on, you know, in some cases the amount of rainfall. We're in drought, so you start seeing a lot less food production in some of the farm fields that let some of these birds make use of getting their, their food, getting their forage base. Mm -hmm. And in times of drought, there's less food. During times of, you know, uh, of heavy rain and good rainfall, there's a lot more food. So those numbers are going to fall and, and rise based on their food source. Um, you know, those are the environmental cues that, they, that these birds will use for even reproductive purposes. Some birds will have two clutches, they'll double clutch, kind of like a Michael Jordan, you know, uh -huh. from the free throw line, right. uh, where they'll raise two different groups of young. They'll, they'll raise a clutch of young, mm -hmm. um, you know, say five young one in, in, in the early portions of the season. Mm -hmm. And then if the environment is still really good, they'll actually have another family. Wow. So they call it double clutching. And that's when you really have a, a good amount of food and the habitat is just right. Everything's working out, they'll double clutch. Double clutch. And, and how long does it take uh, birds to, to do one clutch versus two clutches? Well, everyone's a little bit different. Um, you know, some will incubate longer than others, but usually incubation, you're looking at, you know, two to three weeks to sit on eggs. And then you're looking at sometimes a month to two to even three time, three months um, before the young fledge, before they leave mom and dad, they become teenagers and they get restless and, and they take off. So it's called, it's called their fledglings. And they're just getting ready to take off and leave mom and enter the real world. I was wondering where that term fledgling came from. Now you know. <laughs> We're back at the Living Coast Discovery Center right here in Chula Vista in Mrs. Q's class. Last time we were here, we we're talking about snakes. Today, it's all about fish. Fish. And what are you going to do with the fish? We are going to dissect the fish. We're going to compare the anatomy of a fish to our anatomy because, believe it or not, they're very similar. Let's check it out. All right. So you ready to, to remove the gills? You're going to roll him onto his back, and you're going to open up the operculum. And inside the operculum, you have the gills. So what you're going to do is you're going to feather it out and you're going to grab one gill, okay? You're going to go down to the top of the mouth. You're going to pull at the top. You're going to follow that arch all the way back to the back. You're going to pull it out and there's your gill. So you have the rakers which prevent the food from going into the gills. You have the arch that you grab onto and the filaments where the oxygen exchange occurs, okay? And then once you have your gill out, you're going to actually place it onto your lab sheet where it says gills. So our objective today is to compare the anatomy of a fish to the human anatomy because we have very similar organs and they work pretty much the same way so by looking into a fish they're able to almost look inside themselves and they're able to compare how our circulatory system, how our respiratory system, how our bodies work by looking at a fish anatomy. So that's and what would you say is the, the, the biggest difference between theirs versus ours? It's a lot smaller. <laughs> We're about to do the circulatory system and their heart only has two chambers. Our heart has four chambers. Um, but also they have something called a swim bladder, which is a really cool organ that we actually copied as scuba divers. They have a bubble inside of them that they can inflate and that allows them to go up in the water. And then when they want to go down in the water, they deflate it. And we actually wear BCs as scuba divers that we can inflate, go up in the water. So we actually have copied the fish. So we don't have that organ in us, but we're able to actually copy it. 